Hello and welcome to Telecom TV. We are on tour. We're in California. We're in San Francisco and we are at the IDF, the Intel Developer Forum 2014, where I'm talking to Scott Robon of Procera. Scott, thanks for talking to us. Thank you. We're here at an Intel event. Intel's got a lot of presence here. You are collaborating with Intel, partnering with them. Correct. What in and why? Uh, so, in, uh, in Procera's line of business, developing our application intelligence uh, applications, we've been working with Intel to get high, high performance on Intel-based platforms for over 14 years. Um, our ability to provide the highest performance possible on Intel platforms is key to our business and our customers. What does Intel provide that allows you to nurture what you're doing and to build and to innovate? Uh, they, they're very good at building community. Um, point of fact, the Network Builders uh, group and organization that sponsored uh, multiple pieces of this event this week um, just provides a great community forum for those of us working on different applications that run on Intel you know, infrastructure um, to get together, collaborate, understand what we're doing, and figure out what common issues we have in getting better performance out of Intel platforms. A lot has been said about the development of SDN and NFB in particular, network function virtualization, about whether or not it's going to be it's going to be a closed system or an open one. There's a lot of emphasis, and there seems to be a lot of momentum behind open source programming, Correct. open open source community, and Linux as well. Mm -hmm. Is that what you're involved in? Oh yes, that's an essential part. Um, we we bring a particular advantage here in that. Because of where we sit in most customer networks, we've been having to work with other, other partner, other vendor applications over standards interfaces uh, for 3GPP in the uh, mobile networking world, for example. Uh, that's uh, our lingua franca, right? We understand how to do that. We, we now need to take that to the next level and now work in a virtualized environment with you know, OpenStack, you know, Linux, and be able to work with all the additional piece parts that are required for virtualized implementation. And they will only get more interesting with orchestration as well. Indeed, so how do you plan your next project, your next development, the next iteration? You do it in partnership and collaboration with Intel all the way down the line. How does a system work? They don't tell you what to do. How do you work together? Well, it, it's really an incredible opportunity because the space is wide open for companies that want to get things done and I feel like we're very well positioned there. Um, you know, simply put, we find partners interested in a common customer, and then when we have a customer problem to solve, you can align resources very well for most companies uh, and figure out, okay, how do we work together to achieve you know, customer X, customer Y goals? And a large part of this conference is coming together and working with people at all these booths around me and saying, how do we do that next proof of concept together? Because one of the things we're hearing a tremendous amount around at the moment is the end of the first phase of NFV, the beginning of the second. That's correct. As we move from the, the, the sort of informative to the normative, and as you see proof of concepts actually underway prior to what trialing and then commercial deployment. Yes, so that's that's looming large right now. Um, the first two years of kind of the NFV momentum. Um, cut a very wide swath of issues, right? There's lots of things that we could be working on. Um, performance, I think, is emerging as a key one. As we move closer to real customer trials, um, there have been some great statistics out there about what carriers are going to do in 2015 in terms of live network deployments. If it doesn't work at scale and performance, it's not going to provide real value to the customer. So. It, it's getting very real right now. It's not just a science experiment. Well, 2015 isn't all that far away, let's That's, face it. Yeah. So, you know. oh. <laughs> so you've got a lot of Tell us about the Network Builders program then. How does it work? What does it do? Yeah, no, we participate in Network Builders with dozens of other Intel partners. Uh, we had a great event earlier this week where uh, we came together through multiple panel discussions. Um, I was able to participate and talk about the question you just asked on you know, what's coming in terms of real customer deployments. Great interaction uh, from the from the audience and asking real questions. Some companies that are living this already, some that haven't hit real customer deployments yet are, are benefiting from lessons learned. Do you feel that this time around, the 
the network operators and service providers have the whip hand over the manufacturers. In the past, they very often had to bend the knee to what the manufacturer said, this is what we're providing, you find a way to use it. This time they're saying, you know, you're not locking us in like that again. It's our network, we want to run it. Is that what's happening? Well, that's a very clear message that most <laughs> carriers have sent. I, I, I think you stated it very well. Um, but the carriers need help. Um, there's room for uh, significant system integrator input here. Uh, just because things are open doesn't mean they're easy or they're free. And there's still tremendous work that needs to happen to uh, get things working in the network, taking responsibility for testing of all the individual components and how they work together. Um, and the carriers know that. They're not, uh, they're, they're not unaware, right? It's also very interesting that Intel accepts, along with others I'm sure, but Intel obviously and evidently accepts that it can't do everything itself. No matter how big it is, it has to, have, it has to collaborate and have partners with other, other organizations, other companies that are able, that have specialist expertise and can do things that they can't do at the speed they want it done. That's correct, and I think they understand how important they are in the, the ecosystem, to use a very overused word, uh, but they're also proactive. I feel we've gotten excellent support from Intel. I see them reaching out to the carrier customers, even though they're embedded in so many products. Um, I, can't, I can't say enough about the level of support that we've received from Intel on this front. I agree with you with ecosystem. If I heard anybody say ecosystem again this afternoon, I might have to yell. I apologize. It's, it's, not, it's not your fault, but there is a lot of it, isn't it? That's right. They do it with paradigm shift at the same time. I That's will right. Speak. Synergize too. We got that in as well. <laughs> <laughs> Nevertheless, it's all real underneath it all. And Scott Robon, thank you very much for a very interesting interview. Yeah, thank you very much.